Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick. If you are new here, welcome. If you are not new here, welcome back. All right, so today we are getting into episodes five and episode six of Hannibal. It's been quite a ride so far. I have not been disappointed with an episode yet. I'm invested. I'm curious to see if we are going to be exploring a new serial killer yet again, or if we're going to go back to Molly Shannon's character, or if we are going to go back to the Abigail character, or the serial Serial killer from the second episode, the guy that was obsessed with mushrooms. I don't know. Before we get into the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you can get notifications for when I upload a new video. And make sure to check me out on social media. I have both Instagram and Twitter. All right, let's get into episode five of Hannibal. So now he's just off wandering the road in the middle of the night. He needs help. Oh, he's dreaming, okay. Well, he still needs some help. What's your name? Will Graham. Is that yours? Oh, hi, Winston. Aw, the dog went with him to make sure he was okay. Do you have a history of sleepwalking, Mr. Graham? Not even sure if I'm awake now. Given his history, I, I mean, I understand that they're trying to catch a serial killer, but they keep bringing him onto cases with brand new serial killers. He's not qualified. I mean, he might be qualified, but he's not qualified right now if you catch my drift. Sorry, it's so early. Never apologize for coming to me. Office hours are for patients. My kitchen is always open to friends. Don't drink that. Do not put anything in your mouth that Hannibal Lecter gave you. It might look like coffee. He could be wrong. But it could be blood. It could be spinal fluid. Just don't do it, promise? Your experience may have overwhelmed ordinary functions that give you a sense of control. Uh, if my body is walking around without my permission, you'd say that's a loss of control. Wouldn't you? Yes. New serial killer, probably. Well, damn, bitch! Uh, I mean, okay. I'm gonna need you to prepare yourself on this one. I'm prepared. Yeah. Prepare yourself some more. Eat soup in there. Soup isn't good for the soul. Not this guy. Ugh, he does not need this. What the f- Ew. Uh, ew, that's like some midsummer shit. Madden slept here last night. Uh, uh, what is that? Well, here he goes again with this shit. Cool little trick for people, you know, who are a little bit more mentally stable. This is my gift to you. Well, that's some imagery that I never thought that I would ever see, ever. Now who the fuck is he feeding? <sighs> no, don't be feeding human flesh to Jasmine. No. Where are those people? I hate them. Would I be a horrible guest if I skipped this course? Too rich. Too cruel. Phyllis. Jack. Ooh, she's sassy. I like her so far. She's sassy. Your perfume is exquisite. Similar to the aroma on the air just after lightning strikes. Oh god, he wants to eat her. I think they want to eat me. Run, Gina, run! For our next course, roasted pork shank. And I assure you, Bella, it was an especially supercilious pick. I want to know what the tea is with uh, Gina Torres and Lawrence Fishburne, because clearly they're not getting along. Increased serotonin in the wounds is much higher than the free histamine, so uh, she lived for about 15 minutes after she was skinned. Ugh, poor thing. He's afraid. What is somebody who could do something like this afraid of? Spiders. It's in his vomit. Steroids for the inflammation, anticonvulsants for the seizures, radiation for the chemotherapy. Our guy has a brain tumor. That's causing him to skin people and pose them? How often do you see him? Twice a week at first. Your intention is not to tell Jack. Jack sees the world at its worst. Don't need him seeing me at mine. So is she having an affair? This all started as some misguided stab at maintaining my dignity. Nothing undignified about this. About having an affair? Uh, I think not, Hannibal Lecter. Maybe you should see us both for couples counseling. I would recommend another psychiatrist. This is a beautiful shot. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely stunning. I love that. Please, doctor, proceed. Jack gave you his word he would protect your headspace. 
Yet he leaves you to your mental devices. He's got a point. If he were self-destructive, he, he, he wouldn't be so careful. Unless he's careful about being self-destructive. Making angels to pray over him when he sleeps. Who prays over us when we sleep? Hannibal it makes a damn good villain. Like, obviously, Anthony Hopkins played the role to perfection. This actor, and I will never attempt to say his name until somebody in person tells me how to say it, but like, he's a force to be reckoned with because he's a psychologist, but he's also, or a psychiatrist, whatever, the, whichever one. But also like, he's working with the FBI. Oof, he's frightening. You can ask me anything you want. I won't insult you by asking you if there's someone else. Thank you. But there is. You'll sort out whatever it is you have to sort out. We'll get back to being us. I love you, Bella. Now, I am adamantly, adamantly against cheating. I won't do it. I don't believe in it. I don't f around with that. If there is any of that in relationship, I'm done. But I will say that how they've presented uh, what's the infidelity and what's going on with Lawrence Fishburne and Gina Torres is they're not vilifying her. It's coming from a very humanized aspect when she's, you know, when she was speaking to Hannibal about her relationship and stuff like that. And it's, I'll give him props for presenting a topic like that and not evoking a immediate dislike of the character for me. All right, I get you, you have a brain tumor, but brain tumor or not, if you see people walking around in the street with their heads on fire, tell someone. Yikes. Somebody got it work you out of me real cheap. Doesn't look like the victim. So they're the angel makers? He castrated himself? Ew, those were nuts. I don't know, ask him. I'm asking you. Well, you're the head of the behavioral science unit, Jack. Why don't you come up with your own answers if you don't like mine? I did not hear that. Did I? No, you didn't. No, tell him to f off. He's being a douchebag. He's going against exactly what he told you he was not going to do. He said that he was not gonna let your mental state get f up, and clearly he doesn't give a shit. His wife is off having an affair, and he's just Two hours later. Mm -mm -mm. Lawrence Fishburne? I like you, Lawrence Fishburne, but your character's getting on my fucking nerves. <laughs> that shot was stunning. I know it's a stupid question, considering that none of us could possibly be okay doing what we do, but are you okay? How would I know if something was up with you? You wouldn't, but I would tell you if you asked me. Return the favor? Aw, I like her. She's sweet. That was a really genuine conversation. The murdered security guard wasn't actually a security guard. He was a convicted felon. Could Angel Maker be a vigilante? Maybe he's a former cop. So he makes angels out of demons. How does he know they're demons? Doesn't have to know. All he has to do is believe. Well, no, he said that both of them were, were, one was a rapist and one liked to watch, and then the security guard was a felon. So obviously he has to have some sort of indication that they're criminals. I doubt he believes you're unfaithful. It's clear you love your husband. Women who love their husbands still find reasons to cheat on them. Still, you seem more betrayed by Jack than by your own buddy. Oh, wait a minute. Is she not having an affair? When she said that she was seeing somebody, is she talking about a therapist? Oh. Cancer isn't cruel. Tiny cell wanders off from my liver, finds its way into my lung, where it's just trying to do its job. Oh, is she has cancer? I bumped my head yesterday and I keep forgetting stuff. I am slowly shrinking while this tiny thing grows larger every day. And yet I feel fine. Oh, that's heartbreaking. I was completely confused by when she originally said that she was seeing somebody. I did not catch or even understand that she was talking about like a doctor because she has cancer. Ugh. What is going on? I mean, I feel bad for him, but I, I don't feel bad that they keep putting him in his underwear. You see, can you never not be gay for five seconds? I'm just like, can you not be gay for five minutes? So God has given this person insight into the souls of men. God didn't give him insight, God gave him a tumor. It's just a man who's brain is playing tricks on him. That's the the deer elk thing that he's been seeing in his dreams. Did you just smell me? He did. I really must introduce you to a finer aftershave that smells like something with a ship on the bottle. <laughs> oh lord. Oh my gosh. Does he like smelling cancer or something in him or is he just like you got to be breakfast lunch or dinner bitch? 
So I feel like the fact that he saw the statue of the deer, and he's obviously been seeing the deer in his dreams. Presently, I'm interpreting at that as the deer is representative of Hannibal in his head. And he's seeing him in the dream because he's aware that there's another factor surrounding everything, the deer representing Hannibal, but he doesn't know what it means yet because he still hasn't figured out that it's Hannibal. I took a leave to be with him. I wanted to be there for him. But what he wanted was to be alone. He just kept pulling away and pulling away. He's, made, he's connecting the dots. He's figured it out. I thought that as he got weaker, as the cancer got worse, that it would be less confusing for them. Yep, he just he just came to the realization that his wife has cancer. He had a near-death experience. He suffocated in a fire when he was a little boy. Fireman said he must have had a guardian angel. Where did this happen? Well, there you go. Just like Lawrence, everybody's connecting the dots now. But I don't think, I mean, I know that Hannibal had the whole fishing hook at the end of the last episode, but he doesn't seem to be involved in this killer. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's him. Did Hannibal kill him? But why? I don't know how much longer I can be all that useful to you, Jack. I'm not gonna tell you what you ought to do. Seems like that's exactly what you're gonna do. Yeah, pretty much. He's being a dick still. And there's killing going on that you could have prevented. It will sour your classroom. Then maybe I found a job as a diesel mechanic in a boatyard. You wanna quit? Quit. <sighs> I'm struggling with his character this episode. He's really pissing me off. Wait. How the f did he get down without anybody hearing that? I can give you the majesty of your becoming. Oh, okay, so he was not there. I was like, thank God. Hello, Doctor. My wife and I need to talk. May we use your waiting room? You can have the office. Yee. It's about to go damn. You know, I knew you'd find out. When did you find out? 12 weeks ago. 12 weeks ago. Lung cancer. Hmm, poor thing. I want you to know that I don't want you to be alone. Not now and not ever. We'll beat this together. No, it's your fight, baby, but I'm in your corner. Oh, God, this is heartbreaking. I appreciate that, Jack. I do, but I'm not comforted by you. How could you be? I mean, you're dying. There's no comfort. You're not gonna get any comfort. The, the comfort would be learning that you're no longer dying. I really like the way that this show is approaching more humanized interactions with people to kind of balance out the, the more outrageous, the horrific visuals that they keep showing. I'm gonna sit here until you're ready to talk. You don't have to say a word until you're ready, but I'm not going anywhere. What is this about? Does he know that something's up? Okay, so that was episode five. So I'm, I'm, I'm mixed on that one and it's not necessarily a, the fault of the episode. I'm not a religious person, so I feel like there was certain religious things that kind of went over my head a little bit, but I was totally wrong. And, and I don't know if I misheard or I just interpreted it, it wrong or perhaps it was open for interpretation, but I totally thought that Gina Torres was having an affair. She's not. The pivot <laughs> in my brain from going from thinking that she was having an affair to this beautifully heartbreaking exchange between her and Lawrence Fishburne when she finally has that conversation with him was wow. Gina Torres did fantastic. Lawrence Fishburne, he, he's definitely going to be a complicated character, I can tell. I mean, he's already com complicated, but yeah, I mean, I went from feeling for him to being extremely annoyed by him because he's, I did not like the way that he was treating Will. I did not like the indifference towards Gina Torres, especially more so in that last exchange with Will in the barn. I get he's going through something, but it's just still, I, I mean, this is episode five and I've already started to care about these characters and Will is obviously several fries short of Happy Meal right now, but I feel for Will. I wanna protect Will. Maybe it's just the underwear shots, I don't know. Hannibal took a more, he was less involved in in the this monster of the week type episode. I do think, I, I like the little touches of him. Like obviously he continues serving food, which is undoubtedly people. I like the little sniff that he gave Will. I'm very curious to see what 
Hannibal's fascination is with Will because it seems to be more than just trying to stay one step ahead of the police. I, I, I go back and forth between thinking that he cares about Will in a way, but then he's sniffing him like he's like a McChicken. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, we will get into episode six right now and s let's see what's gonna happen. On your feet, Dr. Gideon, or we will restrain you. All right, what's going on with this? Who's this guy? Gideon sounds familiar. That name sounds familiar to me. Ooh, he's faking it. Oh, shit. Well, that can't be good. Baltimore State Hospital for the Criminally Insane. Do they still call hospitals that? For the criminally insane? Dr. Bloom just called me about you, Mr. Graham. Or should I call you Dr. Graham? No, I'm not a doctor. Well, well, well. Look who sauntered over from the special victims unit. Mr. Graham's going to need to see the crime scene. Oh, yes, that thing you do. You're quite the topic of conversation in the psychiatric circles. That accent needs to be a topic of discussion. No one is convinced. Uh, no, I'm just a friend of Xander's. Bugger it, I'm your guy. The reason you failed and kept failing to capture the Chesapeake River? So I already had him. All right, so I'm assuming this is gonna be like the new thing where we see Will Graham, Lawrence Fishburne walk into a room, the music builds, the camera slowly starts to pull back as they're looking like, oh my God. And then we just see some horrific shit. Damn, he punched her in the throat. Oh no. Did he like crush her larynx? Cause you know, that's very common, especially with paramedics. Hey queen. He's gonna crack before the end of the season. I'm telling you. And it's gonna make me so sad cause I like his character. Your instructors tell me that you are in the top 10%. Top five, sir. You're gonna have to stop correcting me if we're gonna get a long last. <laughs> I was wondering when he was going to say something. Why me? You have a forensics fellowship, six years of law enforcement. And what I don't have are enough warm bodies. I wonder what happened to her. Did she end up getting killed by the killer? Is she in the mental hospital? Did he destroy somebody else's mental health? Who knows? Oh, this is very, very... Silence of the Lambs right here. I'm assuming it's supposed to be, but interesting. Would you prefer a Rorschach test? If you're gonna show me those pictures, maybe you should put a blood pressure cuff to my genitals. That kind of gives a much truer gauge of reaction. Ew. I mean, that's nasty. Brutalization of the body was done posthumously. I do not have to convince you that I am the Chesapeake River. He's protecting somebody. I mean, he's obviously not the Chesapeake Ripper or killer or whatever the f they called him, but he's covering for somebody. Where is everyone? It's just you and me for the time being. Take a look around here. Tell me what you see. Oh, God. Find me a church. I've done everything everybody else wants to do. Find me a church. I'm assuming he ended up getting her killed. Well, if he did that to her, I mean, obviously we don't know if that actually happened yet. But if he did end up getting this other trainee cop killed back in the day, maybe he should ease off of Will. You'll probably spot him before anybody else. Or you will. Hmm, interesting. Curious to see where that goes. Maybe he is the Ripper, I don't know. But if he's a plagiarist, the real Chesapeake Ripper is gonna make sure everybody knows it. How would he have the information on the wound patterns if it wasn't released? Does that mean that it's an inside job? Like whoever it is works for law enforcement or like the medical examiner or something like that, that they would have access to that kind of information? Jack, it's Miriam. I don't know where I am. I can't say anything. Miriam? I was so wrong. I was so wrong. Miriam? Oh, is, is Miriam the, 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 the black and white flashback detective trainee? You're sure it was Miriam Wes? I haven't heard her voice in two years, Jack. You gonna continue to question me on this scene? If so, maybe I should ask you to leave the room while it's still safe for you to be here. He's got a little something, something going on too. He's very angry, but he was angry before he found out about his wife's cancer. So what's the excuse? 
Is he cracking again? Is he about to see the deer? Yeah, the, the deer has to represent like Hannibal and his psyche. That has to be what that is. You might push the Ripper to kill again just to prove he isn't in a hospital for the criminally insane. I have to push Will. Not, no, 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 no. You shouldn't be pushing if it can potentially cause the death of an innocent person. Morning, Agent Crawford. Oh, more. Miss Lowndes. And just when we thought it was over, just when we thought it was safe, she hadn't shown up in a while. I hate it here. It's a bad time. How is it that you wind up where you've ended up? Criminal justice journalism. Criminal justice journalism being a euphemism for tabloid reporting. Drag her, drag her. Your brand of journalism is obnoxious and therefore disliked. Yes, that is an obstacle. Yes. Hey, you know what? She should do it. She should do it. Get her get her byline, get her picture on there. Maybe the killer will go after her. Damn it, Pizza! Do you know what profession psychopaths disproportionately gravitate to? I know the list. And then you know what number six is. Journalists know what number seven is. Law enforcement. Ugh, uh, uh, I don't know what to do with her character because I hate her. I hate her so much. But they gave her some good lines. But yeah, I'm still hoping that uh, Killer gets her. Or at least Hannibal eats her or something. I hate to say though, she does kind of look fabulous. Is that? Yes, people are thinking, Really? Oh, that? Oh, you, are you serious? Maybe, just maybe, Gideon is the most sought after serial killer at large. A killer who's eluded the FBI for years and has baffled their most gifted profilers. Why does he seem frustrated by that? Is he the Chesapeake Ripper? You didn't put any of them on display, why not? Crime of passion. You didn't come here to talk about my wife or the little nursey. What is going on with him? I'm curious, why are you being so forthcoming all of a sudden? Well, what have I got to lose? Why didn't you put her on display? What makes you think I didn't? What does it mean? And what is Hannibal's involvement with it? Because he's, he's been mostly out of it this episode, but he clearly seemed bothered by reading Glenda's news story. Jack, it's Miriam. I don't know where I am. I can't say anything. I was so wrong. I was so wrong. So why were they saying that he didn't receive a phone call though? Like he would clearly still have the, the call log on his own phone. Whoever made that call, thinks you were close to Miriam Lass and feel responsible for her death. I mean, it kind of seems like he is based on the way that they're presenting the information to us. It's one thing for a trainee to go poking around in private medical records without a warrant. Very different if the guru did it. Ah, oh. mm, it kind of does seem like he's causing it. He's being a little shady McShaderton. You were a model patient. You behaved yourself for two years. No opportunity to be naughty. I don't know, it kind of seems like you might want to kill her. Any better not? Not on my watch! Oh, dinner is served. <laughs> God. I don't think I've ever had tongue before. It was a particularly chatty lamb. Ew. Can you imagine going to somebody's house and they serve you tongue? Is it possible you inadvertently planted the suggestion in Gideon's mind that he was the Ripper? I'm not suggesting coercive persuasion. No, he, this guy's an idiot. If he has been unethically manipulated, I need to know. I want to love your insight. Ugh, he is shady, this one. I don't trust him at all. He's trying too hard to, to close this case. He's too convinced, and he's just ignoring all of the signs in front of him. Were I in your position, I would have attempted psychic driving. Perhaps you already have. I'm much more forgiving of the unorthodox than Dr. Bloom. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Hannibal knows. Hannibal always f***ing knows. Last call. Left something that the others didn't. Phone number. The call is coming from inside the house. We traced the call. It's coming from inside the house. You hear me? It's coming from inside the house. <laughs> Is that the detective lady, Miriam? Because if so, that arm looks fairly fresh. So was she actually like dead? Did they bury her? Was there an autopsy or did she go missing? And then she was presumed dead and then declared dead, but she nobody actually knew because that arm looks really fresh. I'm sorry about your wife, Jack. I truly am. I believe the world is a better place with her in it. Hmm, he doesn't want to eat her. It's really sweet, you know? What was her name? My name is Miriam Lass. I'm with the FBI. Never just a trainee, 
an agent in training. What? So they knew each other. I, Hannibal's always f***ing involved somehow. I haven't practiced medicine for some time, but fortunately for you, I have a very good memory. His name was Jeremy Olmsted. I think Hannibal is the Chesapeake Ripper. That's my theory. That's my working theory right now. If it's the gentleman I'm thinking of, I vaguely remember a fellow hunter bringing him in, but I did keep detailed journals during those days. If you like, I can get them for you. He's gonna go get like a, a hatchet or something. It's just run. Run, bitch! Run! I knew it. I knew it was him. This is interesting because this is the first time we've actually seen him. Well, no, we saw him attack when he slammed the other cop's head into the wall in the one episode, but that's like the first time that we've seen him like from a killer perspective. Get down and dirty. All right, so that was episode six of Hannibal. I feel like this is where we're finally starting to get more into the meat and potatoes with Hannibal. He still took a little bit of a backseat for the first half of the episode, but this is the first time that we've seen him outside of when he attacked the one, I think she, uh, she might be a psychologist. The character that I like, if you've been watching, you know who I'm talking about. This is the first time that we've seen him attack somebody since her when he slammed her head against the wall. But this time, like he went, the, the killer claws came out, bitch. So he's he's going for blood and he's going for french fries. Yeah, I'm curious because it's, there's three seasons of this show. So I don't like, I'm, won I'm wondering if how the structure is going to work in the sense of the awareness of who Hannibal Lecter actually is. Like, is it going to be three seasons of him just casually doing stuff and never getting caught and no one realizing it? Or are we going to get to the point where Will and Lawrence Fishburne's character and everybody else starts to actually figure out that Hannibal's up to something? I still think that the deer in Will's dreams is supposed to represent Hannibal. Yeah, this was a pretty good episode. Curious to see where it goes next. I will see you guys next time.